English history is very diverse, but a forgotten moment is the murder of Edward the Martyr. He was a young Anglo-Saxon king, but in 978 he was brutally slain whilst visiting what today is one of England's greatest castles. He had been king for only a few years, and what actually occurred with his death isn't mostly clear. However, there was definitely some underhand tactics, and many point the blame towards his stepmother. So join us today as we look at the king murdered by his own mother. And remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Edward the Martyr was born around the year 962, and his father was Edgar the Peaceful, the King of the English, who reigned for 16 years. Edward was the king's eldest son, and his father's reign was one of peace and stability, but when his father died, Edward succeeded his father as the King of the English. He was just a teenager, and was known as the king's son, but he was not the son of the queen, Elfrith, who was Edgar's third wife. She was known for being a rather headstrong lady. Edward in fact was born to a nun of a Benedictine abbey, and he was not initially considered a successor to the throne. As Edward's father had remarried twice, and was happy with Elfrith, they had another son named Ethelred. Ethelred was Edward's half-brother, and with his mother being the queen, he was seen as a decent contender to the throne, and a possible successor. When Edgar the Peaceful the King died on the 8th of July 975, a huge dispute emerged within the royal family, about who was the rightful heir, and who should become king. Edward was just 13 at the time, and was the oldest son, but many including his stepmother questioned his legitimacy, and many supported that the throne should go to his younger half-brother Ethelred. Ethelred was seen as a legitimate heir, but was only just six when his father died. Edward eventually became king, and he needed a council to help him govern, but there was a split in court led by Elfrith, the now widowed ex-queen of England. She wished to support her son Ethelred, but the powerful Bishop Dunstan backed Edward. Edward eventually was anointed by Dunstan, and it was agreed that Ethelred would be given a large amount of land, in return for his half-brother Edward becoming king. Very little is known about Edward's ability to rule England. Some stated that he had a vicious temper, but others state how he was a polite and kind king, who was held in high regard. It was then said that after Edward's succession, a comet was spotted in the sky that indicated bad luck. During his three years as king, he was involved in the power struggle with his younger half-brother, and there were great fears of rebellion and uprising across the country. Many people rebelled against the monasteries, and other key players at court tried to seize control of land in Edward's kingdom. Edward's father increased the power of the church, and this annoyed landowners, as they became jealous of the church's vast grants of land, and it was a tense situation for such a young king, who was seen by some as weak. Landowners continued to dissent, and there were issues arising in the north of England too, and it looked like civil war could break out. The crisis greatly affected Edward's reign, but by 978, things would get much worse for England. In March 978, King Edward travelled to Dorset to Corfe to visit his half-brother. It was seen as a normal meeting that would take place, with Edward visiting the prince and his stepmother Elfrith. But things went very wrong for the king. Corfe Castle that can be seen today at the time was a wooden structure and fortification, possibly a hill fort, and at the time the Saxon nobility regarded it as a prominent residence. Travelling to meet his half-brother by horse, Edward arrived in the evening of the 18th of March, with a small group of loyal men. They were all met at the gates of the hall or settlement by Alfred's advisers. It was normal for big greetings to be exchanged at the gates of a castle, and the king's arrival would have been announced. Edward expected the king's welcome, however what happened was much bloodier, and would result in the murder of the king of England, and Edward would soon become a martyr. There are different accounts as to what happened next when the king arrived. At the gate of the settlement was Edward, who was waiting for his entrance to the site, but whilst he was offered a drink of mead, from behind whilst the king was sat on his horse, an assassin went up behind him and stabbed him with a knife. He was then left dying on his horse, but the king's horse then bolted, and Edward's body was dragged along the ground as nightfall set in, with the assassin then disappearing. It was said in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle that men murdered him, but God exalted him. In life he was an earthly king, after death he is now a heavenly saint. In Archbishop Wolfson II's writing, around 1016, he said of the murder, 
a very great betrayal of a lord it is also in the world, that a man betray his lord to death, or drive him living from the land, and both have come to pass in this land. Edward was betrayed and then killed, and after that burned. Most historical sources blame his stepmother Elfrith for the murder of King Edward the Martyr, her stepson. It's believed she helped to plan the killing, and allowed the murderer to escape justice, being sheltered before fleeing. Edward's half-brother Ethelred, who was a son of Elfrith, was then placed on the throne, and it's believed the stepmother planned this as a power play to get her own son, who she deemed as legitimate, onto the throne. Edward's body was taken to Wareham, before it was disinterred and reburied at Shaftesbury Abbey. A cult emerged about the young king, and it was said his remains after being dug up were immaculate and intact. When Henry VIII attacked the monasteries during the Tudor period, the bones of Edward were taken out and hidden, and today they can be found in the Orthodox Church of St Edward the Martyr in Brookwood. Despite being just a young boy when he came onto the throne, the most significant event that occurred during the reign of King Edward the Martyr was in fact his shocking assassination. It's been linked to political power plays and much treachery, and it's easy to pin the blame on Edward's stepmother, Elfrith, who had so much to gain from placing her own son onto the throne. His assassination was cunning, devious, and was in fact regicide, with no one brought to justice for the murder of the King of England. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.